Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depends where you are. I'm Doris Chen. I'm a developer evangelist at Microsoft. With me is Joval. Hello, Doris. Hi, Joval. It's great to have you here. Joval, wow, you are a software legend, a must software architect, book authors, Microsoft regional director. That's right. As well as you taught world famous architect courses. That's right. And uh, um, you've been doing great, travel all over the world. And then I think it's great to get some advice, career advice from you. Right. So um, I guess, uh, you know, you've been, you know, career-wise spending your time mentoring hundreds of architects all over the world. And then um, I actually just want to understand uh, what is the role of the architect? Okay, so the role of the architect is not a one thing, right? And so the, the title is actually misleading. One would say, okay, the architect designed the system. And it turns out that's like 2% of the job. The architect wears three hats. The architect is the design lead of the project, but also mm -hmm. the technical lead of the project and the process lead of the project. Mm -hmm. And the architect has to take this very active leadership role on all three. You can't just say, I'm just going to focus on design. I don't care about the technology mm -hmm. or the process. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, nobody mm -hmm. cares about these things. Mm -hmm. um, managers don't care about it. Developers typically don't care about it. Mm -hmm. And if the architect doesn't take an active leadership role on all three, mm -hmm. the project is not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the design is impacted by the technology and the process. Mm -hmm. And the process impacted by the design mm -hmm. and the technology. Every one of these things is affected by the other two. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take a very active leadership role on all three. Mm -hmm. And if you try and actually abstract somebody who is the process lead and a design lead and a technical lead, mm -hmm. you find out that the architect is actually the technical manager of the project. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. they and the, the word manager is misleading here because it's not a Dilbert style, pointy hair mm -hmm. uh, manager, mm -hmm. but the architect manages all technical aspects of the project. And all three has to work in concert, mm -hmm. and you have to work it as a continuum, right? You can't mm -hmm. say, well, I'm just the technical lead, I don't care about the design, mm -hmm. I'm just the process right. leader don't care about that. Then right. you become an astronaut architect, mm -hmm. right? You're floating there in space, <laughs> holding your design. You're saying, oh, this is a good design, right. la, la, la. Right. I don't care if my team can execute it. I don't right. care if we have enough right. time or money to execute uh. it. No, no, no. You have to take an active role mm -hmm. on all three to succeed. Awesome, awesome. You know what? Um, as an evangelist, I work with developer community a lot. Yeah. A very common question I've been asked a lot is, maybe you could help me here, is, I have been a developer for many years. How could I become an architect? Yeah, I get that question in a lot of conferences. <laughs> so I do a session on the role of the architect right. or on design on my right. ideas. And at the end, people come to me and they say, ah, but how do you become an architect, right? <laughs> right. And, and, and the question I'll, and, and the answer I want to give them, I, I'm not saying that, is, is if you have to ask, it's almost too late, right? Mm. And the reason is becoming an architect is a strategic decision. Mm. It's not a technical decision. Right? Technical mm -hmm. decisions are like, do I work for this company or that mm -hmm. company? Mm -hmm. Do I live in this neighborhood or that neighborhood? Mm -hmm. um, people make surprisingly few strategic decisions in their mm -hmm. life, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you go and study? That's a strategic decision, right? right? Who do you choose to marry, right? right? But also whether or not you become an architect. I'm not saying it's as important as those, but it's one of those decisions that have a very long-term horizon. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean, even if it takes a year or two to become an architect, that's okay because mm -hmm. over your career, a year or two means basically nothing. Mm -hmm. And for a strategic decision, you have to typically align your life. So imagine mm -hmm. your life is this mm -hmm. big cargo ship and you have to start changing it mm -hmm. to a different course, mm -hmm. right? That's a strategic decision. So mm -hmm. if it means moving to a different uh, place, relocating, just mm -hmm. because there's a better opportunity that to become an architect, mm -hmm. well, that's what you have to do, right? Mm -hmm. So people don't accidentally become architects. You don't spend days working on your code mm -hmm. and then one day somebody taps you on the shoulder and say, mm -hmm. I now anoint you as the architect. That's not mm -hmm. how it works, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, there's an act of maturity where you mature into becoming the lead mm -hmm. of the project. There's also an act of choice, right? If somebody applies for a job as a developer right. and it's unlikely the company would actually prefer that somebody becoming an architect. And the reason mm -hmm. is that somebody now feels a niche, right? He's mm -hmm. pigeonholed, he's being a developer. Nobody likes mm -hmm. to have a vacuum anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so 
to become an architect, it's a decision you have to make. And mm. don't ever expect somebody will anoint you as one. And uh, don't ever expect that the opportunities would naturally present themselves, mm. right? Mm -hmm. You have to kind of like make it happen, right? Right. So once you start specializing in this, and it's a very different career path than developers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, the architect is also a developer, which is a bit confusing. You have to be even the best developer at the right, team. Exactly. But you're no longer a developer, right? Mm -hmm. Because now you care about the things we discussed before. Right. And so um, how do you become an architect? It's a switch you have to flip in your brain saying, okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to pursue a different path mm -hmm. than I've been on mm -hmm. up to now. Sure. And I think it's, it's very interesting. Like you said, uh, Nobody's going to make an architect. Right. So what kind of things they have to try? For example, I'm, a, say, maybe a senior leader in, in a project already, right? Right. What should I do? Okay, so the first thing you have to do is, again, part of the strategic choice, mm -hmm. you have to choose the right company mm -hmm. or the right environment, mm -hmm. okay? And what does it mean is when you go and interview, even for a title of an architect at a mm -hmm. company, nobody guarantees that they're going to employ you in the right capacity as an architect, right? <laughs> right. So you have to gauge mm -hmm. the investment uh, in quality, right? How mm -hmm. committed they are for high quality code, right? Mm -hmm. If it's okay to ship with bugs, walk away, right? <laughs> right. Um, how many times they met the deadline, right? Mm -hmm. If the answer is never, mm -hmm. probably not a good place for an architect, right? Mm -hmm. If they're just coding like hell, mm -hmm. even if they have a title, it's, it's just a paper title. It doesn't mean anything, right? Mm -hmm. They just want another developer. Mm -hmm. And so... The best career advice I can give to architects is always align their career phase mm. with the environment. So mm -hmm. what does it mean? When you're just starting out mm. and you don't know anything about becoming an architect, mm. the best thing to do is to look for the right opportunity. Look for a tight ship. Look for an environment where things are on schedule, on budget, mm -hmm. on quality, where everything mm -hmm. is clean. And the reason is you want to learn how to do things right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you go for a job interview, don't shy off asking the, the right question. In mm. fact, the tougher the question, the more it is imperative that you ask it, right? Mm. And so you have to find this learning opportunity. In fact, mm. it's very difficult to find a, a company where everything is done right, anywhere, sure. right? True. And by now, um, I say that the most important thing is to find a good mentor, mm. right? So look for a mentor architect, somebody that has some gray hair, that mm -hmm. has been around for a long time, mm -hmm that knows what it takes to do great software because mm -hmm. you, you're aspiring for greatness here, mm -hmm. right? And so don't even look at the company. Look at the person you're going to work with. Right. Ask the question, okay, suppose I work here for two years. What will right. I learn after two years? Right. Gage, is this the right mentor for you, mm -hmm. right? And you have to really find this master architect that you can learn how to do things right from. Mm. And that's very important early on to learn how to do things right. Right. Once you know how to do things right, mm -hmm. the next phase in your career is to look for the most messed up environment where <laughs> nothing works. And uh, you laugh, but it's actually the right thing to do. And the right. reason is, right. imagine you work for an immaculate, pristine environment mm -hmm. where every project is on schedule, on budget, mm -hmm. on quality. Mm -hmm. Everything is like a clock. My mm -hmm. question to you is, how much difference can you make? And mm -hmm. the answer is, not much, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you can't make a difference, you won't get ahead in life. Right. That's how life works. Right. And so once you know how to do things right, and you've seen it across maybe two or three projects mm -hmm. and such, then you go and move for the most messed up environment, mm -hmm. hopefully the one that has hit rock bottom. They, they've mm -hmm. tried every possible wrong way of doing something. Mm -hmm. That's the right place for you because mm -hmm. even a little bit of hygiene, just a little bit of doing things right would transform that environment, mm -hmm. right? And then you get the credits. Okay, you are the one that transformed the environment by in fact doing just basic common sense things, right? right? right. Little bit of design, little bit of project design. Right. That's all it takes to do right. things right. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, that catapults you to the next level. So mm. you do that for a while. Next phase in your career, go for a senior position, maybe manager of an architecture group or an engineering mm. manager at a clean environment, mm -hmm. right? And do that for a while. And then next switch is maybe a CTO somewhere else. So you kind of like plan your career, right? Mm. And it never ceases to amaze me that somebody that aspires to be an architect Architect is synonymous with the word design, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to design thing. Why won't you start by designing your own career? Mm. It's not a happenstance. Right. You don't just stumble along, True. right? You have to, everything has to lead to something else. There should be no false moves. Everything is leveraged because of the one thing you did before. Mm -hmm. And you can't like design how your career is going to be five years from now, 10 years from now, 30 mm -hmm. years from now, how you're going to go about doing it. That's very true. It's, it's, it's great, you know, you should look for challenges. 
and then resolve the problems, right? right? But always align it with the phase of your career, right? right? And then good design your career. Like you should never just thought about, oh, I'm uh, just a developer, right? Let me finish that module, that's it. But think about it. If you were an architect, what would you do even better, right? right? In fact, that's even if somebody is trying to bootstrap where they are, right? mm -hmm. don't look for a new opportunity, mm -hmm. it turns out nothing stops you from doing all the best practices in the scope of what you do. So mm -hmm. your little class or subsystem mm -hmm. is on schedule, on budget, right. no defects, right. designed for maintainability, extensibility, mm -hmm. reuse. Mm -hmm. And when you start doing these things, even mm -hmm. the scope of just a single developer, right. you establish this island of sanity and hygiene ah. around yourself. Yes. People notice that. People mm -hmm. don't like pain, right? right? right. All of a sudden, you shine, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be even fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed guy is king, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, this guy clearly knows how to do things right. Mm -hmm. What is he doing different? How mm -hmm. can we extend his influence in other places? And you kind of like bootstrap your way that way. Excellent. That is a great uh, piece of advice, you know. I think everybody should just do that, not just like be an I architect, right? Agree about I mean, that. you should always, you know, have good attitude, you know, look for change, look for mentoring, you know, and yep. then do a good job. Okay, so um, the other thing is, you know, I've been asked also many times is, what's the future of the architects? Ah, very good. So <laughs> if you look at historically at where we have been, so 20 years ago, the term architect did not exist, right? Mm -hmm. we, there were technical leads or maybe project leads, but mm -hmm. we didn't have the term the architect. Mm -hmm. And then another 10 years went by, and by now if you go to a team and say, who's your architect, and they don't have one, they start mumbling right. apologies. Ah, we know we need to get one, right. we're trying to get one. Right. And so if we accept that today the architect is the technical uh, manager of the project, mm. now put aside the fact that we have shortage of architects. It's not th the fact that we don't do things right is not because we don't know how to do things right. Okay, that's two mm. different things. Okay, so but the environment has also moved. So mm. over the last 20 years, the relative complexity of the application mm. has exploded, right? right? It can be the same application in the same business domain, but we do drastically more complex things. Right. And we talked in another interview about microservices. It's just an attempt of handling that complexity mm -hmm. by providing modules you can put together to satisfy the required behavior, mm -hmm. which keeps changing and at a very rapid rate. Mm -hmm. And so the future of the architect is, in my opinion, the emergence of actually a new role. Ah. And so we try to have the architect control the entire spectrum, all the way from requirements to mm -hmm. code being shipped mm -hmm. of the system. Mm -hmm. But we now recognize that it's probably not doable and it doesn't handle the complexity and the mm -hmm. rate of change. Mm -hmm. And so I see that in the future, architects would focus on the act of decomposing the system into building blocks, these microservices that you can put together mm -hmm. in any possible way to satisfy any future requirements, even the ones you don't know about. Your entire design is gonna be about that kind of composability. Right. Now, there is going to be no feature in any one of the blocks. Mm -hmm. They're all going to be, just like an analogy of a car or an airplane, it's going to be components, a pump, a servo, an actuator. You put them together to satisfy the required behavior. And I foresee in the future that we're going to have a reflecting role on the business domain. Because if you look at what we need to do on the business side to handle the mm -hmm. complexity, the, we're kind of like at the end of the road of our ability mm -hmm. to handle change, mm -hmm. right? And this is where the pain is today. Mm -hmm. and the, the business environment keeps changing much faster than the ability of developers right. or architects to keep up, right? right? There's no way we can code around this problem. Mm. And so let's not try and code around this problem because right. we can't do it. Right. So here's a better solution. Mm. Imagine a role we ca I call the business architect, which right. is the reflecting image of the software architect, but not in a technical domain, but in a business domain. Mm. That person needs to actually understand the market, the customers, the requirements and distill all of that into a core set of use cases representing mm -hmm. the required behavior. Mm -hmm. Now each one of these core use cases is gonna be comprised of a set of activities. Mm -hmm. And you can have hundreds of use cases, but you're not gonna have more than a handful, three, four, five, six of core use cases, mm -hmm. each with a normal, normally uh, a small set of activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the job of the architect would be to come up with a set of building blocks you can put together to satisfy each of these core use cases. And another thing about doing it this way is that if in the future you have new use cases mm -hmm. or new behaviors you don't even know about today, mm -hmm. all they present is a different interaction between your building blocks, not a different decomposition thereof. Mm -hmm. So now when the requirements change, your design does not. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
But the key here is having somebody that understands that, somebody that knows how to talk to the customer and distill all of what they do mm -hmm. into a set of core use cases with a small set of activities. Mm. And so the future of the architect, as I see it, is actually it's the split between the business architect and the software architect. Pure software architect. So is that a, you know, I, I guess the business architect, it's kind of like a, a new kind of like a requirement, it's, a new position, right? It's a I, new pos I it's couldn't an think about anybody's really doing that, right? No, we, and, and the, the reason we haven't seen these people yet is because we have a chicken and egg problem. Mm. We need a person that on one hand is very good talking to customers, understanding their need, winning mm. their trust, getting their business, all mm. of these things mm -hmm. requires very much personality traits mm -hmm. of talking to people. On the other hand, the ability mm. to abstract, mm -hmm. to analyze, mm -hmm. to reduce, these are mm -hmm. very analytical skills. Mm -hmm. People who can do both analytical skills and people skills yeah. are actually rare. Right. And so this is exactly the sort of things mm -hmm. that historically tools mm. uh, bridge. So and if you look at all tools that we use in software, mm. they bridge the gap between the complexity of the task mm. and the capacity of the brain, which is not that great, right? Mm -hmm. For example, you don't have to have compilers to program, mm. right? You can mm -hmm. program without compilers. <laughs> right. but you laugh because <laughs> it's absurd to even try and think about right. it, right? If, if you were to say, how many programmers we have on the planet if we didn't have compilers, you mm. would say practically zero, right? Mm. So the availability of a compiler, it doesn't change the complexity of the task. Mm. It just reduces it to the point that mere mortals can do it, mm -hmm. right? And then we mm -hmm. have lots of programmers. Mm -hmm. So we need a similar set of tools on mm -hmm. the business side, not on the software side, that right. would enable us to capture the required behavior, mm -hmm. to abstract it, to think about it as compiling use cases, mm -hmm. right? So it's not the traditional workflow, say. It's mm -hmm. the ability to convey business uh, mm. terms in, mm. in, in terms of the required behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And we begin to see genesis of these things with uh, uh, the new tools, the logic tool, I think it's called on Azure, right? Mm -hmm. it's, these are steps in the right direction. They're not quite there yet, mm -hmm. right? So I believe that once we're going to have these tools, mm. the profession would emerge, right? Mm. Because tools eventually always catch up with right. reality, right? right? And once we bridge this gap, mm -hmm. we see the emergence of these business architects that mm. are the peers of the software architect. Very, very interesting. So it's not like the bar being a software architect is a little higher. It's actually, you know, your skill set, right? Your capability has to expand to a little bit different area in addition to traditionally what you already have. I completely agree with you. And in fact, not only is it essential to catch up with these skills, mm -hmm. it's a boon for your career. Companies are craving people that know how to do this kind of a thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's good for you, it's good for the company, it's good for everybody. And that's also how I go back to the making it happen. That's how you make also the opportunities happen, right? Mm. So that sounds really good. It's, it's not like just being a, you know architect, but being a better architect. So yes. what are the resources or some things you know, we should be watching for? So I myself conduct uh, twice a year or so the architect's masterclass which I do actually in this campus at Microsoft. That's People right, it's a world famous class. It's, it's sold out so quickly. The, the class sold out uh, six plus months way in advance. The class we're doing in August was sold out in January mm. with a long waiting list. People mm. come from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I talk about not architecture. This is not the architecture masterclass. It's mm -hmm. the architect's masterclass. Mm -hmm. It's about the skills and the techniques and the ideas the person would need in order to succeed in that job. Mm. Wow. Excellent, excellent. But um, so if, you know, somebody say, you know, I'm not quite sure, you know, uh, I want to take your class. Uh, do you have some like maybe uh, community events or meetups? Maybe you could let people to get a little feeling about that class. Yes, in before fact. Before they could take it. You know? And so the audience probably doesn't know, but uh, last year, uh, we produced something we called uh, Architects Days right. in San Francisco. Right. And Doris was uh, the Microsoft <laughs> liaison <helping>. for that. <laughs> and we had uh, close to 100 aspiring architects, not just from all, all over the valley, people flew in from New York and Florida. Mm -hmm. right. And we basically made it a community event mm -hmm. because I, I see it as, as, as my life mission to actually change the software industry, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To transition it into a mature uh, 
uh, engineering discipline. Mm -hmm. And most people never even heard about the ideas and the techniques, not just in system design, there's a mm -hmm. whole world of how you design projects mm -hmm. to support the architecture, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't just, I'm gonna apply any old project plan against this architecture. Mm -hmm. The project has to reflect the architecture, it right. derives from the architecture. So we did two days, uh, but basically a uh, almost a community free event, right? right? It is a free event, yeah. It was basically a free right. event in San Francisco, uh, it was very well received. I mean, uh, and I hope we're going to do another one of these events. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll get a lot of uh, 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 requests. You know, we should do that <laughs> in the future. Absolutely. That's, that's great. So um, one quick thing. So uh, you mentioned about your class. If people are interested in knowing more about a class, yep. what is a website uh, you, you could share with us? Go to www.idesign.net. Okay idesign.net. That's right. Okay, dot net. Okay, dot not dot net. com. All right. No. I'll do that. Okay, we're going to take uh, Javal's architect course, register earlier, and go to www.idesign.net. Yep. Excellent. Well, that's great. A lot of, lot of very useful uh, uh, advice for my career as well for a lot of developers' career. And thank you very much. It's a pleasure, though. It's thank you.